was a real conflict. The West Hawaii Civic Center in Kona was packed for another round of discussion on regulating aquarium fish collecting in Hawaii County. As if to underscore the volatility of aquarium fishing on the Big Island, at the very same time the council discussed the possible new rules for collectors, a court case was being held in the same region. In court was aquarium fish collector Jay Lovell, facing charges for his role in this videotaped altercation off Kona last year. Fish conservationist Renee Umberger was filming Lovell as he was collecting fish when he suddenly swam over, allegedly ripping the breathing regulator from her mouth. The incident made national headlines, in part because it was caught on video. Lovell pleaded no contest and was given a deferred six-month prison sentence on the charge of second-degree terroristic threatening. He must also obtain an anger management assessment. If Lowell stays out of trouble for one year, he will serve no time, and the incident can be expunged from his record. We are satisfied with the plea agreement. We commend the Hawaii Prosecutor's Office for working with on this, coming together on this plea agreement. So it is fair to both sides. Jay's punished functionally for whatever wrong he did, and he's not overpunished. It's not overkill based on something he didn't do or was accused of or something that was made up, which was really what our fear was going into this case that he would be overpunished. Mainly the important thing to remember in a situation like this is that the prosecution agreed as to what Jay Lovell's sentence should be and that the sentence should be as long as he's good for a year and by good I just mean does what everyone's supposed to do, what you're supposed to do, what I'm supposed to do. As long as he does these things this will functionally come off his record at the end because he's not the type of person who deserves to have a criminal charge on his record for the rest of his life. I'm satisfied with the plea agreement, yes. I, w I, I, I wish um, uh, in another world uh, we wouldn't have uh, had the, he the hearing wouldn't have been today on the same day that the Hawaii County Council is hearing another Im uh, important uh, laws to regulate the trade. And so we might have uh, gone ahead and said, let's move ahead with the, with the trial. But uh, timing, timing is everything. Functionally, what would have happened had this case gone to trial is as the evidence came out, it would have shown that uh, Ms. Umberger and the other people in this case functionally drew the foul in a case like this, and that's not allowed. They came to where Jay was, they were looking for somewhere to cause trouble. And that's why I think the sentence in this case is particularly okay, and quite frankly, I think it's part of the reason why the government agreed to this kind of plea agreement, was to stop that sort of evidence from coming out. Following this in the press, if that's what you did is follow this in the press, you would perceive this as dangerous action to take because the organization which had picked this fishing boat to swim after and to enter their fishing zone, functionally to scare away their fish and who knows what else, released a countless number of statements, went on any number of international news outlets, national media sources, for the purpose of letting you believe this was a very, very dangerous action to take. Yeah, Jay and I have both been catching um uh, fish for over 30 years. Uh, I started before I graduated from Kona Waina in uh, 1979. Um, yeah, we're happy with it. The, the end result here is that um, uh, completing all the requirements of the court, uh, this will basically uh, disappear from Jay's record. The, the court uh, understood that there were a lot of uh, mitigating uh, um, circumstances that uh, caused this incident and they recognized uh, the fact that uh, Jay did not go out you know, looking for trouble. He did not go seeking these people. Uh, they came and targeted him and looking for him and were responsible and instigated the incident. So the court understood this, and so the agreement that was reached today basically means as long as Jay complies with the court orders, um, everything will disappear from his record. He, uh, it's as if it never happened, So, uh, which is the same thing you would want in court. But this way, he does not have to uh, go, neither the state nor the prosecution you know, or the defense has to uh, um, go through all the court proceedings. Um, the end result is, is what we want, is that uh, there's no record. Jay is not guilty of this. Uh, Jay's going to continue to fish. Well, that's all we want to do. We've been fishermen all our lives. We enjoy the ocean. It's a hard life. Um, you, you know, you don't get rich off of it. 
uh, uh, but we enjoy it. So we will continue to fish. Um, and we just hope that we can be left alone and, uh, not, and not be harassed. <laughs> it's, it's destructive to the reefs. Uh, every fish collector who's been documented with photo or video um, has been shown to be trampling coral. Um, it, it goes hand in hand with the act of fish collecting. Of course, they're removing herbivores that are essential to coral reef health. Uh, I don't think you would find a room full of people who would raise their hand and say, yes, we have enough fish on our reefs, let's get rid of some and ship them off to the mainland. So depleting fish populations is critical, but it's also cruel and inhumane to the animals because they're wildlife. And there are few examples or probably no examples of where it's a good idea for a novice or someone with no understanding of the complex needs of a wild animal are able to successfully keep them alive. And it's especially true uh, in this situation because the animals are, are kept in artificial um, environment. So it's, it's that combined with the fragility. So um, there are so many reasons uh, why this trade needs to end. It's, it's getting to a point, obviously, that is the altercation that happened out there, uh, escalating to a point that if, if this harassment continues, someone could get hurt. And no one wants that. No one wants it. So we're hoping that uh, um, with House Bill 511 to close the harassment laws uh, that has been introduced in, in the House this year, um, it would close the loophole. It include uh, that it's against a lot of harassed people on the ocean, which is currently not illegal. And so we're hoping if we can get that bill passed, then uh, it will prevent incidents like this from occurring in the future. And these people were required to, to leave us alone and not harass us. Fishing's been going, around, going on in Hawaii for generations. Uh, people fish, that's what we do here. Um, contrary to what the activists say, um, the current counts on fish, uh, fish here in Kona, uh, the yellow tang and coli, which compromise our two uh, uh, most heavily collected uh, fish, uh, over 93%. Their numbers have actually increased 3.4 million fish in the last uh, 15 years because of the ongoing uh, management programs are in place and regulations on our industry. And so there is no depletion of the fish. Um, um, we are one of the smallest fishing uh, um, industries in Hawaii. We collect fewer, you know, take more, less biomass out of the reef than virtually every single other uh, fishing uh, industry in Hawaii. And so we, we have zero impact. There's zero depletion, zero uh, impact on the uh, resource. Uh, it brings millions of dollars into the state. Uh, there's only a handful of us doing this. There's only 19 full-time collectors here. So it makes it impossible for us to have any kind of impact on 140 miles of coastline when there's literally millions and millions and millions of fish. Um, it's impossible to deplete the resource. Um, there's currently 1.2 million aquariums in the United States. There's people uh, keep uh, aquariums all over the world and uh, these people love the fish. Uh, they see the fish, they see yellow tangs in their dentist's office, restaurants, or at home, and they come to Hawaii to see it too. So we are concerned about the resource. Uh, we are concerned of the tourism industry and the dive charter industry. Uh, if, if the resource wasn't there, I would lose my livelihood. So I'm con more concerned about the resource than anyone else. And um, that's why we have areas that we do not dive. Uh, we've agreed to in the past to uh, make sure that the resource remains intact. Currently 55 miles of our coastline is closed to aquarium fishing to make sure that the resource cannot be depleted, to guarantee the public resource, uh, to guarantee the dive charters and the tourism industry have places to go where they can see um, fish untouched, you know, un, just uh, natural, no, uh, no, just no taking of fish. And we support that, we don't have a problem with that. Um, so um, um, their industries have been you know, guaranteed um, to be able to survive and uh, have uh, unlimited resource and the public uh, has been protected for the public resource to make sure that it, it cannot be exhausted. 55 miles of coastline out of 140, it's an awful lot. It's getting, you know, f pushing 40% of our uh, shorelines are protected at 100%. I predict that fish collecting is going to end in Hawaii uh, in the coming years. There's uh, overwhelming uh, support uh, from residents statewide uh, for keeping uh, the fish here on our reefs instead of shipping them off to the mainland. So I predict it's only a matter of time before um, the trade in Hawaii's yellow tanks ends.